time is five minutes past ten. Let's close it out wisely all the day. All thou who changest not abide with me. How's that? Thank you. You can see a white church on top of a hill, and that is uh, the church of Sacre Coeur, Sacred Heart, surmounting the hill of Montmartre, M-O-N-T-M-A-R-T-R-E, Montmartre. Paris uh, Metro was built. It was the second uh, underground railway to go up in the world. The first one was in London. Belfort, the spelling is B-E-L-F-O-R-T. The line of Belfort was done by a famous uh, artist called Bartholdi. He was the man who designed the Statue of Liberty. The area, the uh, subway station here, is called Donfer Rochereau, after that colonel who commanded the garrison.
hours in the jam on the motorway with the children screaming in the back with a wife nagging on the side. For two hours, do you imagine? And when they arrive, then they, hold it, then they need the whole Saturday to recover. And Sunday they have a nice lunch and then they come back from the same traffic jam and Monday they have the blues and they're very tired. On the right hand side you will see between these two blocks on a hill the Sacre Coeur Church, right? it's a basilica in the north of Paris on the right hand side. The Montmartre is very famous, right? it's an artist area, it's a very picturesque area of Paris but too far to go there on the sightseeing tour. a big car, you know, like you have in your country, it would be impossible to find a parking or something. Huh? Also, considering the fuel is quite expensive, so we have quite small cars. Yeah. You know, there are no lanes, so because the lanes would just confuse the people, huh? Everybody for its own, and... On the left hand side you see a beautiful lower yeah? now on your left it's called the Marseillaise or the departure of the volunteers. It's very famous, made by Rude. In the archway you find all the battles of Napoleon and all the generals and marshals who fought for the Grand Army. And below the archway there's a tomb of the unknown soldier. It's an unknown soldier found on the battlefield of Verdun and is representing all the unknown soldiers killed for France in the First World War. Now when we drive around, you will see on the left-hand side, right below the archway. In 1920, they burned the eternal flame. Ah, it's a little flame burning there, the flame of remembrance, in remembrance to all the unknown soldiers killed for France in the First World War, so even the Allied and the enemies. <clears throat> If you go to the top of the Arch of Triumph, you find inside the Arch a museum for the liberation of Paris on the 25th of August 1944. And you will have a beautiful panoramic view huh, to the city huh, from the top of the Arch. From here, we turn into the Avenue de Champs-Élysées. show, huh? If you go to a show, it's the best, no time, because no place is better than Paris, huh, to go to a show, huh? You have the best shows in the world, because we don't have any French dancing girls on stage here, huh? The, most of, of them come from the United States, from Great Britain, you know, because they have longer legs than the French ones. And when we cross the Champs-Élysées on the right hand side, you find a restaurant with a red awning, excellent, called don't call it American, I don't call it fuck it, it's called Fouquet, you know, on the right hand side. You know, with the right hand. <laughs> if you go shopping, excellent clothes, you go to the Rue de Faubourg Saint Honoré, or if you want to look around, you go to the department stores situated at the Opera. Here the Champs Elysees are not so interesting for you, huh, as a shop starts the park section, huh? the park section with galleries, first class restaurants. And uh, let's follow promenade. Huh? If you want to make a little stroll, you uh, <coughs> come into the park section. Often you see people running because this is here the favorite living area for the Americans. And the people like to run, huh? the Americans. You know that? They run and run and run. The Road Iron Gateway. And then the revolution broke out. The people took the Bastille and the king was still 
In Paris, huh? he was alive. He was the king of France. He had less power than before, but he was still king of France. And there was a medicine. It was a time of the human declaration. And there was a medicine, a doctor, and he went to Italy. And from his journey in Italy, he brought a little machine. His name was Guillotin, the blade of the machine, personally. But we don't forget it was for human re reasons huh, that they introduced this machine. And three months later, he laid his head, January 1793. His wife, Marie Antoinette, followed him on the guillotine, how it was called, or the nation's razor. And you see, always in front of the blade, they had a little basket, and the heads always felt in the basket. And when someone was executed, is going to be executed during these executions. Then it continued. 1,195 people were beheaded on the square. And people got a bit tired, you know, it started to be a little bit boring. And then they transferred the guillotine to the east of Paris. They By the food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in the, so you saw the needle already in London, huh? It is also 3,300 years old. It was a gift from Egypt. And you see in the pet style, in the golden letters, the way of transport. It took about seven years. And uh, in the needle itself, the original hero Glyphics. Just one, one more thing. Uh, you know that the American Open is going flashing meadow. Huh? Who is it that flash against? Uh, what's the name of the bloke? Ivan Lendl. But you know that for the first time they played tennis in this gardens. Huh? In this gardens, the tennis game was invented. Within the 14th century, it was a royal game, just played by the aristocrats. But they had no record. They always had a let, but no record, and uh, etc. Okay. After this game. The game of the palm or the jeu de palm, they named a museum. Now remember this museum on the right hand side is pavillon. On the left hand side you see the American flag, the stars and stripes, and this is the American embassy. Because in this mansion on your the left, they signed for the first time a treaty between America and France. Huh? Don't go for the food, no, it's really dog's food. <laughs> There's no windows, no cross in the roof. It's called today the Madeleine Church, on your left-hand side. Here you find the famous food stores. One of the most famous is on your left-hand side called Fauchon, huh? with, your, with a green awning on your left-hand side, huh? the food store called Fauchon. They're brought when they started to build buildings, well, like the Opera House, for example. Commissioned was the young architect Charles Garnier. This man had never built anything in his life. The impression of the style of the 19th century, when people were very rich and they want to express, and they want to show it how rich they were. But never again, Charles Garnier built anything in Paris. Just in Monte Carlo, he built the gambling casino. Uh, <clears throat> the Opera House is today the largest lyrical theater in the world. It covers an area of 120,000 square feet and can accommodate an audience of about 2,060 people. No, 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 for the side show. The ceiling is painted by Marc Chagall, and the front is remaining a little bit the Renaissance style, huh? the style of Palladio. You see the arcades are framed by groups of, uh, uh, of sculptors so on your right-hand side, the sculpted group of the dance, the second on your right, The performance is not so important in Europe, oh, it's just average. But the dancing school is very famous, directed Jewelry House. And Meleo, next to Cartier, is also. Very hotel, huh? the Ritz Hotel on your right hand side, is the first first class hotel of France with the four awnings. And the bar, if you stand in the bar, you get maybe drunk on the same side like Ernst Hemingway, Scott Fitzgerald, Marcel. Browsed. Have a look at the facade of this Vendome Square. Is it perfect? Huh? There's a perfect symmetry. And this facade was laid out under the architect Monza. And he ran out of money. And he could never finish the construction of the square. And you, they were all uh, on this place. It's not living here. In the center, in the middle of the square, you see a column. This column was erected many, many years later, just on, under the reign of Napoleon. And another example for his bad taste, because you see, the column is too big. On your right-hand side, uh, you will find all the fashion boutiques. 
but no temptation, we turn left. Because we are on a cultural promenade, we want to see. You will see this Louvre now in a moment. We are going to turn into the courtyard. And this railway station is going to be transformed into the museum of the 19th century. So this glass pyramid, of course, a little bit, you know, people are not really happy with this idea. But on the, on the other hand, the Louvre is the palace of the centuries. So you find all type of styles in the Louvre. Why not one part in the start of the 20th century? <laughs> So now we're here in the courtyard, on the right-hand side, the Tillery Gardens. The gardens in the French style, now with this beautiful hatches and sculptures. On the right-hand side, the little arch of Carousel. But still today, it is a justice palace. And if you kill someone, you'll be condemned in this justice palace still today. Isn't it amazing to be in the same cell like Louis XVI or Robespierre? Or Réveillac, for example. Well, look at the gendarme. The tower on the extreme left is called the clock tower on your right. And this is the oldest. In this tower, you find the oldest clock of the city. It's a public clock from the 14th century, which was restored about 400 years ago.